It was late December of 1982 when over 2,400 residents of Times Beach, Missouri were ordered by the federal government to leave their dioxin-laden homes. 801 families would leave everything they owned behind. Nothing was allowed to leave the site of the Midwest's worst environmental disaster. Just days before, a flood had unleashed a sleeping threat. The chemical known as 2378T dioxin, TCDD, had been spread over the now mud-washed town. Taking with them only memories and an uncertain future, many of the residents of Times Beach crossed the bridge that spans the Merrimack River and left their homes for the last time. The relative prosperity of 1925 overshadowed the Depression years. The St. Louis Times offered blue-collar workers an opportunity to own beachfront property at a new resort known as Times Beach. By purchasing a six-month subscription to the St. Louis Times, anyone could buy a square lot for just $67.50. All that was required was a subscription and $10 down. Lots sold quickly. The Times had to open a second section to extend their offer. The number of Times subscriptions grew as the excited buyers claimed a piece of Times Beach for themselves. The first houses were built as summer homes. It was a dream almost too good to be true. During World War II, Times Beach became a permanent community. Throughout the war, a tight bond formed among the members of the growing town. To aid in the Second World War effort, chemical companies produced many types of defoliants to cut through thick underbrush in some combat zones. Among these was 245T trichlorophenol, TCP, an intermediate substance in the making of some chemical products, notably herbicides. After the war, 245T was marketed commercially. Five companies, Monsanto, Dow, Diamond Shamrock, Hercules, and North American Phillips produced 245T. Just let me hear some of that rock and roll music. Any old way you choose it. In the 50s, Times Beach was still a growing community with many families living there year round. Residents worked together to build roads and buildings. By 1952, Monsanto linked certain health problems to the use of 245T. In 1965, the U.S. military began spraying a defoliant over many parts of Vietnam. This defoliant, commonly known as Agent Orange, was comprised of 245T and 24D. By 1969, the discovery was made that the combination of 245T and 24D resulted in 2378T, also known as TCDD, dioxin. By 1971, the use of Agent Orange in Vietnam was discontinued, but not before 12 million gallons contaminated many parts of the country. Also in 1971, Russell Bliss, a waste oil dealer, was hired by Northeastern Pharmaceutical and Chemical Company, known as Nepico, to dispose of their waste chemical products. Bliss agreed to accept and dispose of waste oil from Nepico, the chemical waste was then mixed with other waste oils and later sprayed on roads and other Missouri sites. Shenandoah Stables was among the sites that were sprayed. Within weeks after the spraying, several horses died and others developed sores and became emaciated. Simultaneously, unknown amounts of the cancer-causing substance TCDD were produced and spread over many parts of Missouri, including Times Beach. 
In an effort to reduce dust, Bliss sprayed many dirt roads with waste oil in communities surrounding the Verona, Missouri plant. Times Beach residents constantly battled the bothersome conditions of the dusty summer roads. Too poor to pave them, the community paid Russell Martin Bliss $2,400 to spray the roads with oil in 1972. The 23 miles of roads in the community required 40,000 gallons of oil. Conditions worsened at Shenandoah Stables until the owners, Judy Pyatt and Frank Hempel, were left with no alternative but to permanently close their stable. Pyatt's family and Frank Hempel all suffered devastating physical complications from their contact with the contaminated oil. After Judy Pyatt's daughter was hospitalized, the Federal Center for Disease Control was notified. Hundreds of birds, 62 registered quarter horses, and other farm animals died or were destroyed as a result of the contamination at Shenandoah. The deaths and illnesses at Shenandoah stables would serve as a prelude to the tragic transformation of the lives involved elsewhere in Missouri. In August of 1972, the CDC published a report on the Shenandoah incident. The chemical that caused the devastation was still unknown. Russell Bliss continued to spread the tainted waste oil over much of eastern Missouri and Times Beach. In 1974, the CDC identified dioxin as the contaminant and went to Missouri for further investigation. Later that same year, the CDC tracked the dioxin contamination to the Nepico facility. Samples were taken from the tank at Verona. Dioxin levels were as high as one million parts per billion. The CDC completed its report of the investigation in 1975. Many of the roads that Bliss had sprayed, including the road in front of his own home, showed contamination of dioxin. Bliss's truck sprayed the roads of Times Beach for the last time in the summer of 1976. In 1980, the federal government established the Superfund Act to fund the development of innovative technologies to dispose of hazardous waste. The second investigation by the CDC and the Department of Health began in 1982. 41 sites in eastern Missouri were targeted for investigation. In August of that year, the results came back on the eastern Missouri sites, and in October, the Environmental Defense Fund released the results of 41 suspected sites. Among them was Times Beach. In November and December of 1982, samples of soil were taken at Times Beach. Only days later, the Merrimack River rose 22 feet above flood stage, leaving Times Beach completely underwater and the town's people without homes. With concern that the floodwaters had washed dioxin throughout the town, the EPA advised the residents of Times Beach not to return to their homes. By February, Times Beach was in the national spotlight for dioxin poisoning, and the federal government announced its plans to buy out Times Beach and close the town permanently. The government offered housing to anyone displaced from Times Beach for up to one year. Frustration and tension grew among the residents as more and more federal agencies became involved in the disaster. It became increasingly difficult for them to know who to turn to. In the wake of the flood and possible health threat of dioxin poisoning, many residents felt lost and betrayed. Their private lives and personal losses became national news. The security and anonymity of their small town lives had been shattered. It was hard to explain to outsiders that at Times Beach everyone knew everybody. There was a feeling of continuity and community you don't find everywhere else. It upset me that I can't go back to my birthplace. We've lost something. We've lost that sense of security, the security of a normal, healthy life. We can never go back. I'd like to know if the dioxin is in my body and if it will affect my children. Who will find out for me? Our biggest loss was that our lives were so upturned. We tried to keep things as normal as possible and plan for the future, but as soon as one problem was solved, there came another one. We wondered if we were ever going to be normal again. 
After the flood, some residents returned, making the EPA's job of on-site testing increasingly difficult. One EPA worker recalls. It was real crazy. We walked into people's homes with our suits on, and their kids are just running around. We must have looked like those space agency officials in the movie E.T. One Times Beach resident recalls her children playing on the freshly oiled roads years before they knew of any health risks. I remember my daughter and her friends would make a game of seeing who could run through the hot oil with bare feet and stand in it the longest. I recall hearing the stories that the townspeople would tell about their kids playing in the streets, and it scared me. It still does. The oil would get all over the kids' clothes. They would track it inside, and it would get all over everything. It was real hard to clean up. After we moved, it was hard for my husband to believe that anything we had wouldn't be taken away. He felt that from then on, you live only for today, because there might not be a tomorrow. What bothers me is there's no answers, no solutions. We have no information about the health effects of docs and that someone isn't contradicting someone about. We're just caught in the middle. You're probably wondering, what is dioxin? Well, dioxin can form as an unwanted impurity when 2,4,5-T is processed for other chemicals. Dioxin consists of two benzene rings connected by two oxygen atoms. The chlorine atoms are attached to the rings at positions designated 2, 3, 7, and 8. The name TCDD comes from the four chlorine atoms attached to the molecule, two at each end. The chlorine atoms can attach themselves in 75 ways. This is what gives us the 75 different kinds of dioxin. Of them, five are known to be toxic. The dioxin found at Times Beach, 2378-tetrachlorodibenzo-p-dioxin, is the most toxic form in this family of compounds. Scientists believe that the symmetry of the molecule is one of the reasons that 2378-T is so toxic. One scientist believes that cells begin to produce different chemicals after being invaded by TCDD. The new chemicals may result in cancer. There are two close chemical relatives to dioxin, also known to cause health problems. The well-known fire retardant PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, and the lesser-known chemicals called furans, dibenzo p -furans. Some of the many health hazards related to dioxin include chloracne, a skin disorder resulting in blistering and scaling of the skin. Other concerns include birth defects, liver damage, sterility, and cancer. The real difficulty lies in the fact that many of these effects cannot be scientifically linked to dioxin and may not be seen for up to 20 years after initial exposure. Something is wrong with the health of everyone in my best friend's family. Her husband had always been physically healthy, but two years ago he began getting these severe headaches all the time. The doctor diagnosed the cause of his headache as a brain tumor that is too large for surgery. Now his memory, eyesight, and speech have been affected also. We lived on Blakey, near what was considered the three hottest blocks, Juniper, Ivy, and Laurel. In that three block radius, at least one person from each of the 30 families had seizures. The series of health problems that we experienced became overwhelming. Some children were born with cleft palate or spina bifida, one of my neighbor's children had constant bladder and kidney infections. One couple even had a baby born with his kidneys outside its body. A lot of doctors and scientists still don't believe that all our problems are related to dioxin, but it doesn't take an expert to know that a concentration of so many health problems in one small community isn't normal. After relocation, former residents were ostracized and experienced social alienation from other communities. People were afraid that they would be contaminated if they got near us. Our mail was returned unopened in plastic bags. Our kids were labeled as dioxin dummies. And some people referred to us as those dioxin people. I see it as a terrible accident that should never have happened to us. We lost our homes, our neighbors, our friends, everything. Our whole world's being pumped with chemicals. We're all going to have to pay the price, especially our children.
Many of the former residents of Times Beach still live within a 50-mile radius of the 480-acre plot of land they once called home. Among the hazardous materials the EPA has evaluated, dioxin is by far the most carcinogenic substance after radioactive materials. As a byproduct of some chemical processing and the former production of Agent Orange, dioxin contamination is spread primarily through the food chain. Among these sources are meat, dairy, and fish products. The final cleanup of Times Beach began after 1990. It involved demolishing the entire town and burying and storing all contaminated waste from the soil to refrigerators. The town has been completely blocked off for the time being, allowing no one without a permit to enter beyond the guarded gates that bear a skull and crossbones. Still pending permission by the state, it is hoped that the contaminated material will be incinerated within the next five years. To date, incineration is considered the best means of disposal for the contaminated waste. Intense media coverage of some disasters like the one at Times Beach often overshadow daily occurrences of global environmental disasters. Explosions in Italy, Bhopal, India, Chernobyl, Agent Orange in Vietnam, the exposure of chemical workers and townspeople in Germany and Love Canal, New York, Texas, and Oregon, just to name a few. In Missouri alone, there were 41 sites of dioxin contamination. Cleanup is being done right now in Times Beach with the anticipation of opening a museum in memory of a chemical disaster and the eventual development of a green site where families can visit and play once again. Each year, the United States generates 264 million tons of hazardous waste. Today, science and technology are advancing at such an accelerated pace that if we do not ask questions and keep informed, we too could lose our homes and our friends, our families, or even our lives.